Hello folks, Captain Jerry Dillsaver here for our third instructional video of the 2021 Oak Island Saltwater Fishing School. Now today we're going to move back inshore. We did the first one inshore and then we went into the ocean. Now this week we're coming back inshore, at least mostly inshore, and what we're going to talk about is fishing weedless spoons. I don't know how all y'all feel about them, but over the past eight to 10 years, the weedless spoons have become some of my favorite lures to use inshore. They're basic. I mean, it's just a lure. It has a little tang that you can bend a little bit and it protects stuff from grabbing on the hook. So it'll slide off and you don't get hung up on everything that it passes over. They come in different sizes. They come in plain and hammered finish. And I'm trying to develop a, a preference for those. Not sure what I like yet. I used to plain for years and years and years, but I think in some low light situations, the hammered has a little bit more uh, flash to it as it rolls in the water. Anyway, these are a great thing. We catch them we, with them. We catch uh, red drum. We catch flounder, surprising amount of flounder. We catch trout. Now, I started with them looking for red drum um, and found out that the other stuff bit them. I've caught stripers. When I fished in Florida, I've caught snook. Caught a little bit of everything on them, and they come several different ways. The plane, we can take these, and I'll show you in a minute, but we'll cut just the curl tail off of a curl tail grub and put on it for a little bit of trailer. And then there are some that are spinners. Here's one that is an inline spinner. And here's one that's a 90 degree L spinner. But you can set these up several different ways to make them do a lot of stuff and they attract fish in a lot of different ways. Let me show you a picture and we're gonna come back and talk a little bit about fishing the plain ones. Okay, well during that pause, you saw a picture of some of the plain uh, weedless spoons. You have a plain in a quarter ounce and this is a gold, plain in a half ounce in a copper, a hammered three quarter ounce, and a hammered uh, ounce and an eighth. Now this is copper, this is gold. They make them in several other colors. These are the two colors that I primarily use. I use the gold on most days but if the sun is extremely bright, a lot of sunlight coming down in that water, and I'm seeing the lure flash retrieving it, I'll switch over to the copper. It doesn't seem to flash quite as hard, and the odds are that it does not uh, scare the fish quite as bad. Now these rock through the water, and it is amazing. Uh, you can fish them right on the bottom, up a little, up a little further. They're typically shallower water things, but sometimes I even want to fish them a little deeper. And what I do is put it on a Carolina rig, if you will. I tie the spoon on a loop knot. Hope you can see that loop there. That's the no slip loop knot. I left the tag end a little long. Hopefully you can see it. Just a short leader, 18 inches up to a swivel. The bead is here to keep the sinker from chafing the knot. Half ounce sinker, then the line on up to your rod and reel. That'll hold it in harder current or in a little deeper water. It'll help you keep it down along the bottom. And that, in my opinion, is where these do fish better. Um, so, we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about the actual fishing techniques, but that's the plane. You can go with them, just tie it to the end of the line. Short leader with this, you don't need a bunch. 
you're going to be throwing it in the edge of the grass and stuff like that so you don't want a big leader to get out and get wrapped around something and you get cut in the grass short leader and i fish it on braided line the braided line seems to be a little bit more durable when i'm fishing around weeds and trees and in the grass and that sort of thing okay welcome back you saw another picture there um we're going to move to me the next step from the plain weedless spoons is the weedless spoon with a with a trailer on it now this may well work at any time but where i find it the most productive is in the heat of the summer in july and august when the water is really hot and the fish are a bit lethargic and again over in the winter when the when the fish just you know they're not moving much they're cold but they want to feed because what this does is you can move it slow and it looks like it's struggling now we just reach in the bag and get us a curl tail out and i'm going to tell you to use your scissors and snip it off uh i really actually do bite them off most of the time and the thing here this is particular most people this is where you, you go, huh? When you put it on the hook as a trailer, it goes on sideways. You don't want it up or down with the hook, but you want it laying out to the side like this. That way the water coming off the edge of the spoon will vibrate that tail whenever it's off the bottom. And I like real soft tails, so they'll stretch out as you pull it across the bottom. I think, I don't know, I don't know what a fish thinks, but I think it looks like a crab coming across the bottom. And it'll grab, you know, that swim flipper that's out there, and it'll move quick and slow down, and it stretches and pops back. But I like to start off fishing it just as slow as possible and let it just wander all over everything. But on my gold, I'll, I'll often use something in the green family of chartreuse or something like this. The copper, uh, I'll use something that's a little more in that color, um, maybe a white here. But again, you're wanting a tail that's pretty stretchy so that when you pull it across stuff, it'll stretch out and pull and, and look like something that's going across. Now you're moving this at a fair pace, but this tail, anytime it hits open, it vibrates real hard. And it looks like this is struggling. It looks like it's swimming hard and getting nowhere. So that's the key of using the one with the trailer. And it may well work all the time, but I have seen it work extremely well when the water is either real hot or real cold. Okay, welcome back again. The next step in weedless spoons is those with spinners on them. And I'm gonna show you two kinds. There's one with an inline spinner, uses a Colorado blade in front, and there's one with what I call the 90 degree L spinner. And it comes up in front, it goes up just a little bit, and the Colorado blade hangs back off of it. I do like the Colorado blades. They give a little more thump in the water. They tend to get noticed uh, both by sound and by the flash. I use these when the water is a little dirtier or when it's just real off color and light isn't gonna penetrate through it. I think the flash of that blade spinning and that little bit of thump uh, will help fish realize something's going by and as long as it's a rhythmic sound, fish are basically curious as opposed to run and hide. So many times they'll come and look. As long as the sound is rhythmic, the fish typically are not afraid of it. They might stand off a little bit at first and see what it is, but they're gonna turn and look at it and it may draw them in. That's where the spinner spoons start 
And the next thing that works really well on this inline is these beads are brass and they click a little when it's moving. So you get a little bit of noise and you get a little bit of extra weight. This guy casts really well into the wind. This one doesn't particularly well. You get some flutter with this still, a little bit of helicopter, but it's got enough weight. If you'll stay low and punch it, it'll go pretty good into the wind. And of course, casting downwind is just a matter of lobbing it up in the air and letting it take it. So we've got three spoons. We're going to be back in just a minute and talk about how to fish them. And it's real easy. The basics are the same for all of them. Okay, let's learn how to fish these, these weedless spoons. We're, we're looking here in Cape Fear area. Drum, red drum, is probably the primary target. They catch a surprising amount of flounder. Trout will eat them too. When the stripers are around in the winter, they'll eat them. Um, wow, I don't know what else I've caught here. I have caught snook and other stuff elsewhere. Um, but they obviously look like something fish want to eat. Now, basically there's two things that you can vary to help fish these. You can vary the rod angle. Low, holding it down by the water. Medium, holding it fairly well straight out. Or high, holding it up at about a 45 degree angle. And the speed of your retrieve. That's what you can do. Let's start with those rod angles. A low rod angle will help keep that bait moving along the bottom. This guy especially, I want to feel him bumping across the bottom. I want to feel that pulling and him going. You move the rod tip up to a mid-body level and you don't hit the bottom as much. You're not crawling along it, but you touch it every now and then. But the lure comes up a foot or so off the bottom and it's coming along and you get more action from the lure itself not just bumping and if you move the rod angle up to high you're up here then that brings the lure off the bottom and you can bring it back fully in the water column close to the bottom or a little higher now your retrieve speed is the other variable when you're retrieving slow it allows that spoon again bump 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 across the bottom a slow retrieve a low right angle it's going to drag on everything and it's probably going to get attention to stuff just from looking stupid from bumping into everything um i know there are some places around here we don't have a bunch of rip wrap but we got some rip wrap around where upper dutchman creek comes out into the waterway there from the wildlife ramp uh the the wall that runs from fort fisher over to ball head um, and a couple of other places you can get right parallel to that and with your rod tip up and a medium retrieve this will come through there at an angle like this and you can bump it it's, you're bumping the bottom but by hold and by real and slow you stay on the bottom by holding the rod tip up you keep it from dropping into the holes and hanging up okay now back to a medium retrieve speed it's going to bring that lure up just a little bit move it a little bit faster some days those ideal days the water is 65 to 75 degrees you may want that lure moving a little faster and the faster you pull it you bring it up into the water column in fact you can take these spinner baits and you can pull them fast enough that they will get right up on top of the water and come across the water like a bass buzz bait so you can move them as fast or slow as you want and with rod angle control where they are in the water column. Now, you do have a couple of options for this one with the, the spinner on it and this one with the trailer. With these, you can occasionally twitch the rod tip and you're not trying to bring it to you, but up, like up. So you bounce it up off the bottom. It will allow this tail to vibrate as it sinks back down 
it'll click these and give a little different spin to that spinner as it free falls. And it's just a little bit different look. You get a click with the beads. And sometimes that's that little difference that it takes to get the strike. Some days the fish are just waiting to see something different. My point to you is do not overlook weedless spoons. They are a tool that will put fish on the end of your line and in the live well for a tournament or in the cooler uh, if you're looking to take dinner home. Uh, they work. Take the time to, to learn to use them. Put in a, a little bit of time and see how they work best for you. And I believe you'll keep them in your box. Gold for the average day. Copper for that real bright sunny day. And vary your speed till you find what, and, and level in the column till you find what the fish want that day. Until the next time, this is Captain Jerry Dillsaver saying good fishing to you.